Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Hu Chen. I'm the MI physicist at the Imaging Research Facility of Indiana University. Today I'm glad to have this opportunity to talk about tissue classification of the brain based on the diffusion uh, MI signal. So why do we care about brain tissue classification or uh, segmentation? First of all, there are clinical applications such as delineating lesions or surgical planning. The, uh, uh, the brain segmentation is also critical for volumetric analysis. In functional MRI, brain segmentation can help with brain registration and remove removing spurious activation. In deficient MRI, segmentation can also help brain registration and in addition, it's very help, useful to guide fiber tracking. For most application, segmentation is performed on T1 weighted image because the T1 weighted image has high resolution and low geometric distortion. However, there is confound for T1 weighted image for segmentation. It may suffer from B1 field inhomogeneity and may provide non-optimal contrast. For instance, in this case, uh, in the neonatal brain, the contrast between gray matter and white matter is not decent. Also, the segmentation needs to be warped to fMI or dMI image space which may introduce some errors because fMI and dMI images are typically acquired with echoplanar imaging that is prone to susceptibility artifacts. Uh, the DiPi offers a simple tool to perform uh, segmentation on T1-weighted image. The algorithm is based on hidden micro, uh, micro random field theory similar to FAST of FSL and HPERS of ANTS. So you just uh, run this simple com uh, command, then uh, it will output uh, nice uh, images of CSF, gray matter, and white matter, um, the probability map of these three classes. As I, as I mentioned earlier, segmentation on T1-weighted image is not perfect. So for DMI applications, segmentation based on DMI images has several advantages. First, it can provide complementary information from arising from the micro, uh, microstructure. Uh, yeah, again, this, this is an example of the neonatal image, the PTI, and show a very good um, contrast between the white matter and gray matter than the T1 and T2 weighted images. Um, it also helps with uh, special normalization of diffusion tensor images. And uh, tissue classification helps tractography. There's no need to do correlation between uh, with diffusion image and uh, T1-weighted image. Moreover, the, it is less susceptible to signal inhomogeneity. Roughly speaking, there are mainly two approaches for segmentation on DMI images. Either by generating images from DWI with tissue contrast or using the DWA images or signals directly. There are many ways to generate images with tissue contrast from DMI data. I will go through four of them. The diffusion metrics um, from uh, like from DTI or DKI and uh, spectral mean and an isotropic power map and a power law between direction average signal and uh, delay average. 
Okay, so uh, back in 2000, 2003, new Etro first applied seven channel fusion on parameters derived from diffusion tensor and showed reasonable good segmentation results. So they used ADC and uh, the eigenvectors of the diffusion tensor and uh, along with FA, RA, and the VR. Together, all, uh, the seven channel fusion gives much better results uh, than those using these uh, parameter, uh, parametric map alone. And recently, Zhang et al. they developed a deep learning method based on um, segmentation, uh, uh, based on the by computing BKI based image features and uh, learn segmentation from tissue labels derived from T uh, T2 weighted image. And the result is very good. So they derived a bunch of DKI metrics like MK, AK, RK, and along with uh, FA and the eigenvectors. And uh, then they learn from the tissue uh, classification from the T2 weighted image. Then this, they apply this model to the another to a new data, and uh, they originally this model was computed on the HCB dataset. The learning was on the HCB dataset, but they applied to even clinical dataset. The result uh, is very good. And by using spherical mean technique. Hayden et al. showed that the transverse and the long longitudinal uh, diffusion coefficient can together can very well separate the brain tissue into gray matter, white matter, uh, gray matter, white matter, CSF, and partial volume effects. It is worth mentioning that the an isotropic power map derived from spherical harmonic expansion of DW signal also re resembles the T1 weighted image. So you can compute uh, an isotropic power uh, map from using this equation. And then you can see that this um, isotropic power map resembles the T1 weighted image. They, they, they look very similar. Next, I will introduce a new method we developed recently. It is very simple, but robust. It is based on the observation of distinct response uh, to B values for different tissues. So yeah, I borrowed this map, uh, this figure from the paper by Jerison. And you can see that the CSF, gray matter, white matter, they have distinct response to, uh, to the diffusion gradient at different B values. Um, a simple power law relationship is found between direction average signal and B value. Uh, by McKinnon. So they they did the up to B value of 6,000, they observed this uh, linear relationship between the log of the signal, duration average signal, and the log of the B value. And uh, the coefficient alpha and beta um, varies with tissue types. So for white matter, alpha is close to 0. 0.56, and uh, for gray matter, alpha is near 0. 0.88. So these, uh, this nice feature can help us to separate 
white metal gray matter, and CSF. Let's take a look at the alpha and the beta maps for three HCB subjects. So we can see apparently alpha map is good to separate gray matter and white matter, but not CSF because CSF here, they, they look pretty much like uh, gray matter. But we can take advantage of beta and uh, beta can sort out CSF nicely. There's not much contrast between gray matter and white matter. So here, hence, we propose to use direction average signal of EW images to classify brain tissues into CSF, gray matter, and white matter. First, we exploit the beta map to find the CSF mask, and then the mask of the gray matter and white matter. On the other hand, we invert the contrast of alpha map and mult to get this and multiply by the uh, gray matter and white matter mask to form a pseudo T1 weighted image. Then we can apply standard segmentation algorithm to the pseudo T1 weighted image. This figure shows that the pseudo T1 weighted image is very similar to the T1 weighted image. Okay, here's a comparison of the segmentation results from SPM12 using the T1 uh, weighted image and a pseudo T1 weighted or composite image and the true T1 weighted image. The segmentation from the composite image is uh, in black and white and overlaid by the segmentation using T1 weighted image, which is pink. And the threshold of the probabilistic map is set to 0.5. And you can see that um, the overlap is between these two segmentations is very well. Um, There's a yeah, very large overlap. The discrepancy is pretty small, like the pure white or red color. And this method is robust against downsampling. We compared the dice score between segmentation results of the proposed method and SPM12 on three HCP subjects using A, the full data set, B, two shared data, the B value of 1,000, 2,000, and C, only one third of the data, but still three shells. And we also uh, compared the dice score between SPM12 and FSL here. So the results show that um, the, there's not much difference from by uh, downsampling the data. The dice score is still around 0.9 for both square matter and white matter which is comparable to the dice score between FSL and uh, SPM12. Um, yeah, this table shows the mean and standard deviation of the dice scores between segmentation results of the proposed method and uh, SPM12 on 10 HCP subjects using A, the full data set, B, two shell data, and C, one third of the data, but three shells. So the mean value, mean dice score is 0 0.908 for white, uh, point, yeah, uh, around 0 0.9 for white matter and uh, 0 0.89 for gray matter and uh, 0 0.78 for CSF. They are, yeah, pretty good. And the effect of resolution is also explored. Let's go between same results of the proposed method on low resolution DW data, which is a 2.5 millimeter isotropic uh, com compared to the 1.25 millimeter isotropic data showed previously. And uh, SPM12 on high resolution T1 weighted image resampled to the same resolution for three HCP subjects. Uh, there is a, overall, there is a slight uh, small decrease 
decrease of the dice score from high resolution to resolution. But uh, yeah, but this number is very small and not actually not always decrease. Okay, so we can take a, a look at the meaning of alpha and the beta values. So the beta value is act by definition is a log of the signal normalized by B0 image. Because there's much bigger signal change for from B0 to high B value for CSF than gray matter and white matter, the beta map is good to separate CSF from gray matter and white matter. Here, I'd like to uh, remind people that mean diffusivity computed using all three shells and one shell, this three shells is one shell, may differ significantly. So just be cautious. Yeah, as a comparison, the beta image here seems better than uh, mean diffusivity to separate CSF from gray matter and white matter. For the meaning of alpha, we hypothesize that alpha is related to the neural density, at least in the white matter, as suggested by the high correlation between alpha and FICVF computed from Nordy model. In gray matter, it is more complicated. Uh, further investigation is needed to find the physical meaning of alpha and what microstructure information it conveys. And this method will be implemented in dye piping, so uh, stay tuned. Okay, let's switch the gear to second approach for brain segmentation using the DWA images or signals directly. Well, the signal re response to diffusion sensitizing gradient is also distinct for gray matter, white matter, and CSF. So this figure shows uh, um, DW signals of representative voxels for CSF, gray matter, and white matter. They are quite different. Um, yeah, so CSF has a big job, and uh, the white matter, um, this um, fluctuation is much larger than, uh, than CSF and uh, Gramet. So therefore, it is possible to classify the tissue solely based on the DWS. Here, we present a recent work using sparse coding to fully segment the brain based on DW images. The basic idea of sparse coding algorithm is to represent a signal with a sparse linear combination of atom signals. The, uh, uh, here's the objective function. The, there are two important parameters, n and uh, gamma. So n is the number of uh, atoms, predefined atoms, uh, num a predefined number of atoms and gamma is a regularization factor that determines the sparsity. Maybe it can be better um, described by this, uh, schematically by this diagram. Um, so there's a um, direct, uh, directionary, the, uh, dictionary, and uh, each item in the dictionary is called a uh, atom. And then a signal, can be represented by the sparse linear combination of the atoms. Yeah, so here's a signal, it's like represented by three, uh, uh, combination, uh, by the combination of three atoms in this case. And the key to this uh, method is that, uh, is the sparsity of the, uh, the, the combination of the coefficients. For a DWA dataset, um, so each voxel has a time series signal, which is a re response to diffusion sensitizing gradients. We can imagine that there are a number of white matter atoms and gray matter atoms and CSF atoms. And the signal can be represented by these atoms in a sparse uh, fashion. 
And based on the coefficient, we can assign the voxel to gray matter, white matter, and CSF uh, accordingly. So this is a flow chart of the algorithm. We first take the logarithm of the DWS signal. Then using sparse uh, coding to find the dictionary. And then to um, classify the, the atoms based on their uh, features. Then uh, for uh, we compute the coefficient of each atom for each voxel. Then using the voting mechanism to determine which class the voxel belongs belongs to or the probability of belonging to a class. Then we yeah. So this the segmentation is realized. Here are the results of 10 discriminative atoms and coefficient maps. Out of the 10 I atoms, two are CSF, uh, here two are CSF, and two are gray matter atoms, gray matter atoms and two are, uh, six are white matter atoms. atoms. Yeah, you can see that the white atoms are quite distinct from the CSF and gray matter atoms. And uh, gray matter atoms, gray matter atoms have, can also be, by looking at the map, they're quite different from the CSF maps. And uh, even the feature of the time series, yeah, there's a, you can discriminate them to gray matter. SF, yeah. And here is an example of a white mass signal represented uh, uh, representation. So the raw signal and then take log and uh, it can be represented by a linear combination of three atom, white matter atoms. And so in this case, the, the voxel is 100% white matter. So the one tricky part of the algorithm is the selection of the two parameters, n and gamma. To consider different acquisition schemes, we synthesize six DW datasets from each HCB dataset. We basically downsample them to windshield, uh, to, sh to one shell, two shells, three shells, and then six, 96 direction and 32 directions. So the two, Six DW data, new six new DW data sets, sub data sets um, in total, and then we vary the number of atoms from ten to forty, uh, and the sparse parameter gamma from 0 0.05 to one, and for each data set, the dice score using different combination of, of size and gamma was compared against the best one, and uh, yeah, so we compute the I score for each combination of N and gamma. And here you see that uh, um, this parameter selection result suggests that direction dictionary size of 15 is optimal. And uh, gamma has a range of 0 0.2 to uh, 0.6 in this range. So we, uh, the, the, we have similar good results. So we used gamma equal to 0.3 and n equal to 15 uh, in the implementation. Okay, so we uh, here's a result example of the result. We obtained pretty good agreement with segmentation of structural images. The segmentation from our segmentation, black and white, is overlaid by the segmentation for, from SPM12 using the T1 weighted image, uh, which is red. The overlap of the two segmentation is shown pink in the figure. It is also robust against downsampling. Um, so without downsampling and downsampling here, the, 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 there's not much difference actually. And um, the advantage, so the advantage, although the, by looking at the dice score, they are slightly lower than uh, 
those from the previous method using direction average signal. But this method has an advantage. It can work on single shell data. And it's in very interesting. It the probabilistic map shows slight difference between cerebellum and the cerebrum. Yeah, I, I think that's because the response of the 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 microstructure of the cerebellum and the cerebrum uh, of the white matter uh, of gray matter is slight different, and so their response to the signal to the diffusion uh, sensitizing gradient is also different. And then you see these uh, slight different uh, yeah, maps. And a comparison with other similar method using exemplars of white matter, gray matter, and CSF shows that our method performs better. Um, yeah. Here, yeah, our uh, life score is higher than mm, Yaps work. Okay, so in summary, tissue classification of brain can be realized from DWI images with high accuracy, especially parameter maps derived from DWI offer various feature contrasts. And temporarily, tissue characteristics are also embedded in WI uh, TWA time series. So these features are good for segmentation using the TWA image. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you for your attention.